What's cracking YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. As always, it's your boy Nicholas. Today we're gonna do something I haven't done in a while. That's a tech review. I haven't bought much tech. I'm not one of those guys that really salivates over tech. I'm not gonna spend two hours doing a review, taking different video angles and camera shots of it. I just wanna get down to the nitty gritty. This is, as you saw in the previous clip, the Fitbit Ionic. I didn't even know they came out the new Fitbit. I've gone through different Fitbits before. I've had the Blaze, I've had the Charge HR, I've had the Flex, I think, which is the skinny one without the heart rate monitor. I think every single one of them, except one I lost, I've sent back. I didn't even know they came out with a new one. And I like trying some of the new fitness tech because, you know, I'm into tech, I'm into fitness. Why not? So I bought this one off Amazon, charcoal gray, I guess. It was $299, $299. I think that's what it retails for. And I think it just came out this month, maybe two or three weeks ago. I'll take these off so we can get serious here. Most likely I'm going to, I think they have a 30 or 45 day return policy. So I bought it, I'm probably just gonna try it out for like two to three weeks, maybe a month, see how I like it. If I decide that I love it, then maybe I will keep it. But $300 is a lot of money for a watch, for a smart watch, for fit, for anything. You know what I mean? I just want to try it out. So basically, I'm, even if I need to pay the return shipping, which is like $7, I think it's a good exchange, right? First thing I notice when it unboxes, it looks a lot like the Blaze, which is like the big face, about an inch long, the strap, the width. Comes with two, so rather than you having to order, which this is cool, they give you a small and they give you a large, comes with both, that's a plus. Comes with the charger, comes with instructions, how to set up the Fitbit, how to connect to your phone and whatever other instructions it has. Has a little plastic piece on the face. I'm gonna unravel this bad boy. So first thing I'm gonna do, plug the charger in. With this one, you don't have to unstrap anything, you don't have to take the face off, which is cool, because I think you had to do that in the last one, but it just plugs right into the back here. Easy, see the thing turn on, tells you to go. I can't read that, but it says fitbit.com slash setup. So we're gonna do that on the computer. So you just do it through the app. All right. So I plugged it in, it's basically fully charged. When it sets up with your phone, it has to link up their Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and it just does the initial settings. And it took a while, it took like 25 minutes around. So let's see how easy this thing snaps on. It's got the regular thing you put in there, bing, bang, boom. And then it's got like a clip that just pick a hole, snap it in. That's what she said. It fits nice, it's really comfortable. I haven't messed around with any of the settings yet. See, it's got the clock right there, steps, BPM, Cal Roy's music, exercise coach. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this bad boy to the gym. Gonna lift some weights, probably do a, a chest workout. I'm gonna do a few things. I'm gonna jump rope. We'll see how accurate like the step tracker is. We'll see how accurate the heart rate is. To see if, you know, it gives me a good overall calorie burn. And these things obviously aren't gonna be 100% accurate. Like they never are and, and they never will be. The Fitbit's so far improved from what it was when it first came out and they got the, the heart tracker on the wrist and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna hit the gym, test it out, and I'll show you uh, what it's looking like. Got some pre-workout fuel, a little caffeine from the Monster. Cookies and Cream Quest Bar. I'm waiting for the day that these things, these trackers can literally track everything. Like track your food. They need to just make a chip that you insert into your body. Like I would totally, if, if they were like, yeah, we're gonna put a chip inside, like they, like a very, very minimal surgery. And they just like put it in your wrist or something and it automatically tracked your heart rate and how many calories you burned throughout the day and exactly what you ate. I would totally be in for that. I'm a piece of shit like that. I would be down. I'd sacrifice myself. I'd guinea pig it. I'd be sick. Imagine having all the stats and info just on the dashboard of your computer, 100% accurate, given that it's inside your body. Anyways, I'm just rambling now, but I'm about to get the workout in and let's get it. Through. You, you said you got them drugs, but I've never seen you slice. 
Awesome. All right, so I got done with the workout. What I did was basically, I didn't get on the treadmill. I'll do that for you guys probably later in this video. I did the jump rope for a little while. I did it like two minutes at a time to see like what my heart rate would get up to. And it got up to a max beat of, I think like 140 or 150. I think that's like 70% of my max heart rate, 70, 75, which is around, you know, that's like where you want to be if you're doing a HIIT workout. So I think that was about right because I was pretty out of breath. And then I did basically a full body workout, just body weight stuff for about 25 minutes. Pull-ups, push-ups, dips, seated cable rows, a couple other things, just quick sets, quick reps because I'm, I'm on the way to brunch right now. Boy's got to be somewhere. And you saw the numbers on the screen, 230 calories burned, 28 minutes, average BPM of 123, max 149. That sounds probably exactly right right around where it should be so in terms of the heart rate while the workout is going i just look at the overall i didn't try i wasn't like oh i just finished a set of push-ups like ma let me make sure this stuff is right yeah like 230 calories from about a 25 27 minute workout is probably right on point so i'd say from a weightlifting perspective yeah the heart rate is good all right so another aspect of this review that a lot of people are probably wondering about is waterproof water resistant supposedly this thing is water resistant up to 50 meters which is really far like you could a fucking scuba dive 50 meters that's how low you go. Actually, you probably don't even go that low. Anyways, I just took a shower after the gym and it's working fine. So it is definitely water resistant. I took the chance for you guys. So if for some reason this breaks and I can't return it, y'all owe me $300. I'll put my Venmo in the description. Right now I'm getting ready for brunch. Waste all the calories I burned on some margaritas. Hope you all have a great Sunday and go Falcons. All right, so test number two in the books. It's the next day, back at the gym. Give me two seconds while I get my car. Oh shit, we going down down and early around. Today I did sprints on the treadmill. I basically walked for about five minutes and then I jogged at like 6.0 for five minutes. And then I started doing sprints, 10 miles an hour, 10 and a half, 11, and then 12. 12 is the max speed they do on the treadmills in my gym. So I did like, I think I did six sprints overall and they were like 30 to 40 seconds long with like a minute rest in between. On the Fitbit, which is cool because you, you choose an exercise, you know, they give you pre-programmed different things you could choose, run, treadmill, swim, weights, interval timer. And I guess it like, it tracks better because it has a better idea of what you're actually doing. More so that you're lifting a weight rather than running or something so i'm not really sure whether or not to choose interval timer or treadmill when i do sprints but i, I just chose treadmill because i was walking and jogging first and you could look at all the past workouts that you have in here actually you look on the app on the phone so i can't show you off here but it has it on the app on the phone and really i was just looking for like if, if i think it's close in calorie burn and heart rate and the average heart rate on it was like 130 i think throughout the 20 25 minute length of the workout which is probably about right because i was walking and jogging for a lot of it so my heart rate was down but when i got into the sprints it said my max heart rate hit 200. now if if you use the formula, it's like 220 minus your age. I'm 25, so it would be 195 would be like my max. So it's basically telling me I did 200 while my max is 195. So I guess, I don't know, maybe I should have died out there. It's kind of dying at the end when I did my last couple sprints. I think I burned 300 calories over the 20 to 25 minute span. And that's probably about right. It was close to what the treadmill had. So I would say in terms of heart rate, in terms of calorie burn and things like that, it's definitely accurate so far. And it has the heart tracker in here. So it's on your wrist the entire time. You're supposed to wear it, I think like two fingers off your wrist while you're running or whatever. I don't know, I think that's serious. So far I'm a fan of the Fitbit for sure. Next thing I will do is kind of get into the uh, the sleep part of it. So when you get into the app, the first thing you notice, like the top left, it starts syncing. And it does that every time you open the app. And I think you could set it so it syncs throughout the day, but that will probably waste more battery. And it will update as the day goes on. Since you're wearing the watch, you know, the app will track everything that's going on throughout the day. And you can go day by day looking at each of the previous day. And you can look at it on a weekly or monthly basis. And I guess you can export it via different whatever you know whatever kind of uses you're trying to get out of this and it tracks everything from steps to the floors you walked up to the miles you've done and then the calorie burn and everything i do think that like you see here my calories burned for like two days ago was 4500 i definitely don't just based on my experiencing and me knowing my body and like my diet i Definitely don't think I burned that many calories that day. So it might be a little high. Yesterday it had me burning 3,500. And I did work out both days. So it's possible that, you know, maybe I'm underestimating how many calories I'm burning in a day. But I do think you should probably take that for granted if you are like someone who tracks their food. And within here, you can actually do that. You can go to, you know, you could set your goals and then put in calories as you're eating throughout the day. Like, I don't know, I'm just gonna search something quick. Yeah, you could put like a Big Mac here, you know, boom throw it in there and you could track how much you've been eating throughout the day and it also obviously tracks how many calories. So if you're, you know, if if you're in a, a deficit or you're trying to cut weight and you're trying to lose, you know, you're trying to go like 500 calories under your your maintenance calories or whatnot, that's a good tool within there. I do suggest my fitness pal, it's probably my favorite food tracking app. And then the other thing that people definitely are interested in is the sleeping portion of this like app and this you know this is what a lot of people are interested in and it basically just tracks how many hours of sleep you got a night and i've had it for three nights basically you could see here on the top 
I'm in the middle of like a, uh, a challenge where I'm waking up for 30 straight days at 5.30 a.m. I got a lot of work to do, I got a lot of stuff to get done, so I need to be productive. So as you can see, it has me waking up right around 5.30 each of the last three days because I started it three days ago, this challenge, and I'm getting about five hours of sleep. Now when you check the sleep, like when you go inside this and you look at the numbers, it, it actually breaks it up into the different sleep cycles, which I have no idea how accurate this is. I don't even know how they actually like, you know, try to track this, like if you're in REM or light or deep, like I get, maybe it's just based on movement and if you don't move for like two hours at a time, it assumes you're in the deep and it will definitely know if you're like getting up to go to the bathroom or whatnot. I need to get some more deep sleep because I'm getting light sleep. I'm awake for 10% of my night. That's just, that's not good stuff. But regardless, you get the point. It's uh you know, it, it's a cool tool, I guess. I'm not sure how useful it's gonna be like practical and how, how many times you could actually put it into use, but it's cool to know, I guess. And what else do we got on here? I mean, notifications, community, you could add friends. It has workouts on here. We're gonna switch over to the camera view. This is the watch. When you're on the app, I have the dashboard open up. You can, you can go on the dashboard on your computer. It's just, you know, Fitbit.com and you register your device. You can change the face of this within, within your app or within your computer to have different designs and stuff and show what exactly you want it to show. I have mine set up like this. So it's the clock here, steps, calories, BPM. You can get a bunch of different apps on your machine that I haven't really messed around with too much. And one of the cool parts about this new Fitbit is you can actually store music on here. The annoying part is, first of all, it's not integrated with Spotify, which is some bullshit because I love Spotify, but you have to download, so you have to download music. If you use like a streaming service, you're not gonna be able to stream it just straight through here, like you can't store the phones, but I think it can store up to 350 songs on here. So you could download the songs on your computer and then transfer them. I haven't really looked into it because I don't download music, I just stream it through Spotify. And the useful part about that is if you download songs onto here, you for one, don't have to take your phone with you if you're going on a run. If you have the Bluetooth headphones, you just put them on, hit music and it will it will uh, Bluetooth straight there. And this is what I was talking about, exercise, run, treadmill, you basically pick one, boom, it starts it. And once you end the workout, it tells you all the information from the workout that you just had. And that's stored on the Fitbit app. So you can look at, you know, day over day, the different calories you're burning through each workout and whatnot. And then they have this app called Coach. I think it's just three different workouts that you could basically pick and do while, like if you don't have any workout that you went into the gym with or whatever, you can just click Coach and they have three pre-made workouts, but I, I'm not sure. I don't think you can add workouts on here. I don't think they have any additional ones, maybe like a pay for kind of package. I mean, it's cool nonetheless, I guess. Put your wallet on here if you're paying. I think they have a Starbucks app too, so you could hook up your card. They have the weather, alarms, timers. So you could set this to buzz every time you get a text or a call, which is what I have on. I might take it off though, because if you're like on your phone and you're texting, you're gonna get a buzz on here every time. And then they have like some kind of meditation thing I haven't really messed around with. Probably useful for people that meditate. Kind of to wrap this video up, I'm gonna give my final thoughts and a couple other things I didn't mention throughout the video. So this is a lot like the Fitbit Blaze, but it definitely comes with a few more upgrades. It definitely is a little different than what the Blaze offers. Again, it retails for $300. It's $300 on Best Buy, $300 on Amazon. Maybe there's gonna be a sale because it's almost Christmas time. So if you wanna wait to see if it drops like 250 or 200, that's probably a good idea. Again, you could download, I think it's 300 to 350 songs on here so that you don't have to take your, your phone with you if you're going for a run outside or something. Also, they have a built-in uh, GPS, like a map. So if you're going for a run, this will track it as you're doing that, which I, I don't think they had that on the Blaze. I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they had that. So that's a cool upgrade for people that run. I don't really do outside running or anything. I, I mostly just go to the gym and lift weights and whatever. Now it comes in three different colors. One that I have, which is the charcoal gray. It comes in blue gray, silver gray. And then the last one is just like this weird burnt orange blue. I'm not, I'm not really about that, but you could choose from three different colors. They're all the same price. Again, this thing comes with the large band and the small band. It's really comfortable. I've had absolutely no problems sleeping with it. it has, I haven't noticed it like waking me up. You could take it into the shower with you. I've showered three or four times already since I've had it over the last couple days. The battery life is good. When we were on the app, it said I had half battery life left and I've been wearing this. I haven't taken it off in the last three days. So battery life looks like it's gonna be four to five days at a time and then you charge. I'm sure the charge is probably, I don't know, an hour or two hours and then you're ready to roll. And it just has a bunch of different nifty apps on here. Like if, you know, the weather is on here, put in different locations, like 10 day forecast and it has everything you'd want on here. The heart tracker, you see that, I don't know if you can see the little green light under there, but it's right on your wrist. It has the heart tracker. From my experience, it's pretty accurate with the heart rate. It's accurate with the calories burn in terms of during the workout at least what you burn overall for the day I feel like it might be a little high but that's kind of what I've seen throughout all the other Fitbits as well 
So as long as you keep things constant, like if you're eating a strict number of like calories on a diet or something, and this is always gonna be a little bit high, then as long as both things are consistent, you'll be able to tweak things and, and figure it out on the way. And it also comes with the uh, Pandora app. If you don't wanna download the songs with the uh, 2.5 gigabytes of internal storage, you could just listen to Pandora if you have your headphones. Highly suggest getting a pair of Bluetooth headphones, totally Fitbit irrelevant, but once you go Bluetooth, you never go back, I can promise you that. You got a nice cheap pair for like 30 bucks on Amazon. I've gotten them myself and used them for like a, over a year now and they haven't broken. Overall, this is definitely my favorite Fitbit that I've used and I've used the Charge HR, the Flex, uh, the Blaze. I'm a fan of this, I'm still deciding whether or not I wanna keep it. I kinda want my $300 back, I just wanted to test it out, but it is definitely impressing me and it's a cool watch, it looks pretty good. You could definitely order different bands on Amazon if you want it to look a little less like techy and fitness wise, like you can, I'm sure you can order a brown leather band or like a black leather band to make it look a little more classy. So, you know, it tracks your workouts, your calories, your steps, your heart rate, your sleep. You can track food within the app and you can look at all the past history. So it's definitely a very good tool. If you're super into fitness and you like tracking and you like numbers and analytics and all that kind of stuff, this is definitely a good purchase for you. It has the alarms. You can set your alarm clock to buzz when you want it to go off. You set goals, syncs right to the app throughout the day. You can look at the app on your phone. You can look at the uh, the app on the desktop. So it's really like wherever you are, you'll be in touch with the Fitbit kind of thing and you can track what you're doing throughout the day. I would say definitely worth buying if you are into this sort of thing. That's gonna wrap up this review. If you enjoyed, please go give this video a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, this might be the first time you've seen my channel. I don't do a lot of tech reviews. I do a ton of fantasy football. So if you're into fantasy football, check out my other videos. I also do a vlog every Saturday. So if you enjoyed this kind of style of video, like the vloggy Moorish kind of video, you'll enjoy my Saturday videos. Basically the vlog is, is just tracking my life. Uh, like six months ago I left my full-time job to start my own marketing gig. So I have my own, I'm basically freelancing for myself. It's just following me and, and tracking my like my day in day out life and, and how things are going within the marketing business as well as my other passions like fitness obviously, tech, nutrition, music, all that kind of stuff. So again please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Comment down below if you got any questions or if you use any other smartwatches that you like that you think are probably better than this. I would love to hear them. I love to try these other ones out. So that's that, and I'll see you on the next video.